You know what? That's enough. No more tech news. There's been too much tech news already. I'm done. I'm out. Oh, come on. One more? Okay. One more tech news. Yes! If there was any lingering doubt about the legitimacy of the leaks concerning NVIDIA's RTX Super line of graphics cards, they're probably gone now. Listings for EVGA's versions of the GeForce RTX 2060 Super and 2070 Super hit Amazon this morning and were documented in fairly great detail. The listings mentioned a launch of July 9th, which is consistent with information previously leaked by videocards.com. And yesterday, videocards posted a photo of a stock 2070 Super. Then today, they detailed the spec changes we might see, including slight boosts in clock speed, memory, and memory speed. According to these leaks, the official announcement for the Super line will happen on July 2nd with availability on the 9th. Those dates are placed basically perfectly to disrupt AMD's launch of the Radeon RX 5700 series on July the 7th. Although still further leaks point to AMD fleshing out their own lineup with an RX 5800 and 5900 later in the year. Here's what I wanna know. Why can't Nvidia just let AMD have a nice launch party for once? They're kinda like that friend that makes your birthday all about them. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of hardware launches, Valve has just officially launched their Index VR headset. Reviews seem to be saying that the Index provides what might be the best VR experience yet with 1440 by 1600 pixels per eye and a 120 hertz refresh rate. Furthermore, the finger tracking Knuckles controller also enables new unique gameplay. The only problem is that there aren't a ton of games that make use of the new controllers and a complete kit with the headset base stations and controllers costs 1,000 US dollars. That is more than double the price of the 399 Oculus Rift S. And to make matters worse, Gabe Newell made a joke about Half-Life 3 at the Index launch party. And you, you know what, Gabe? That's not funny. I know. That's not funny anymore. I'm upset. I'm, well, I, I would love to check out the index, but they wouldn't send me one. They just didn't even reply to my message. So maybe later. Speaking of people being upset at Valve, the company has responded to fan and developer complaints about the mini game baked into the Steam Summer Sale. You see, this year's sale came with a mini game called Grand Prix. Players are supposed to pick one of five teams, boosting its score by buying games and completing in-game quests. Random members of the top three teams then get a chance to win one of the top games on their wish list. Now the problem though is that the instructions weren't super clear and many players ended up deleting games off their wish list in order to prioritize more expensive ones. That led developers to complain about huge decreases in wish list numbers, which are really important for game visibility on the store. Furthermore, players were also confused about how the team boosting mechanic worked. Not that it ended up mattering because everybody just joined Team Corgi anyway. So Valve has tweaked some features and told players that they can just move their most wanted game to the top of their wish list with no deletions required, but it's unclear at this time whether or not the sale can be salvaged. Because let's face it, Corgis would never beat a hare in a race. Yeah. The whole thing was completely unrealistic from the get-go. Legs are too short. Now it's time for the Brick Quicks, brought to you by Displate. Regular posters are cool, but if you roll them up wrong just one time, Luke Skywalker is gonna have a weird bent face forever. Well, Displates are magnet-mounted metal prints that are durable and look way cooler than a piece of paper anyway. Displate has over 260,000 artworks spanning many influences and styles, and they feature an easy magnetic mounting system with no power tools or holes in the wall required. Plus, Displate plants 10 trees for every Displate purchased. They're good people. In fact, they're so good, they'll let you use discount code LTT at checkout. We're gonna have that linked below to get 15% off. So check out Displate down below. Brick Quicks, ever heard of them? No. Me neither. You can't stop the leaks, my friends. This time, we got a glimpse at the upcoming Ryzen 3900X on Geekbench, where it almost matched the Intel Core i9-9900K in single-threaded performance. Ooh. If I'm Intel, I am like shaking in my boots. I don't even wear boots. Oh. Furthermore, it beat Intel's top mainstream chip by 27% in the multi-threaded test. 
We also got some Ryzen 3700X benchmarks showing that chip beating the 9900K in multi-threaded performance. So like, here's the thing, even if Nvidia manages to rain on AMD's Radeon launch parade, Ryzen should bring a smile back to Dr. Sue's face. And doesn't she deserve it? She works so hard. Revolutionary and visionary designer Joni Ive is leaving Apple after almost 30 years. He was the right-hand man of Steve Jobs and was instrumental in creating the sleek, minimalist look that Apple products are known for. But don't worry, he's not going far. He's creating his own design company. What was it called? Love something? Love? Oh, I don't know. I can't remake love. No, that's probably not it. And he's going to have Apple as his first client. So hopefully we'll still be able to make fun of those Apple launch videos by doing a British accent on a white background for years to come. They are and there's more leaks, by the way. Photos have popped up of Samsung's upcoming Galaxy Note 10 Plus. So I guess Note 10 Pro is not going to be the moniker. Okay, that's fine. The phone features a nearly bezel-less design with a singular hole-punch camera at the top, and the Note 10 Plus is expected to be the first Samsung phone to drop the headphone jack, teaching us yet again that lesson about why we cannot trust our heroes. Luke Skywalker failed, and this is basically the same thing. Hackers broke into the Russian search giant Yandex late last year in an attempt to spy on users, and they were reportedly sponsored by a Western nation, specifically a member of the Five Eyes Alliance. So that's the US, Britain, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. <clears throat> you know, if you ask me, it was probably the Kiwis. Oh, yeah, yeah they, their, their island is small, but they can be very fierce. Dangerous. You know, never cross a Kiwi, that's never. what I say. And the Pentagon has apparently developed a device that can identify people from 200 meters away by detecting their unique cardiac signature or heartbeat with an infrared laser. Well, yep. I think it's time to just cancel facial recognition research because this is like yeah. just way, way Shoot easier. Pew, 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 hey you guys, who are you? Pew, no. who are you? Pew, pew, pew. Now you know who I am. And it's time to cancel this episode because it's over. Thanks for watching guys and hey, if you need more tech news, I want you to know that I'm gonna be right back here on Monday. Just kidding, I'm taking Monday off, but it'll be someone. Yeah, yeah. It'll be me. it's gonna be Riley. Oh, poor Riley.